One example of a building standard is Passive House. And Passive House is a voluntary building standard, um, although it's being used in some European countries for the national standards, or the standards are based on Passive House. Um, it was created first in 1988, and it's based on two things, comfort and low heating energy. Um, and Passive House has uh, very high levels of insulation um, with a special care about windows and the heat performance of windows. Uh, the air tightness is very high. So because it's very airtight, it also needs, usually needs a ventilation system, active ventilation. And this active ventilation is usually a heat exchange ventilation system. Um, so we start off with insulation as the standard. And of course, um, with insulation, the problem we can get is condensation if the insulation is not airtight. Um, we can see that um, what will happen as the hot air, usually in the winter, the air inside has much more humidity than the air outside in absolute humidity. So as the uh, as the um, hot air leaves, the temperature drops. As the temperature drops, the relative humidity goes up. And so we're in danger of the walls having condensation inside. Um, what's happening uh, in terms of this graph is the temperature's dropping, the humidity's going up, and then it hits the dew point. And we don't want the dew point to happen inside the walls if it's not airtight. Uh, so to stop this, we need an airtight building. And um, usually, if we're worried about humidity in the winter, um, we need to be airtight on the inside and prevent the hot air with its humidity from, from going through the walls and condensing in the walls. Um, so, of course, if it is airtight, we're in danger of humidity buildup inside the building and we need ventilation, which is the next part of the Passive House Standard. And um, if you have heat exchange ventilation, then you can get fresh air in the house. And also you can do this without losing too much heat. Um, the next step, the next important thing to worry about for Passive House is um, thermal bridges. As you get more insulation and as you get an airtight building and as you start to heat recovery from the ventilation, um, it becomes important what happens at the corners and the junctions. And you need to make sure when you're building that you don't make any gaps or any change from one material to another or a gap or a where the window is installed in the house. You need to watch out for all of these thermal bridges and build without thermal bridges. This leads then with passive house to a comfortable house. Um, the whole house should be warm. Um, so you don't have cold areas in the house going through a corridor or on your way to the bathroom. Um, there should be no drafts. Uh, there should be no cold surfaces in the house. Um, the fresh air, the air should always be fresh because you have ventilation um, keeping air, air coming in, keeping fresh air coming in. Um, they should also not have overheating if the passive house design is followed. And the heating costs should be very low. Um, we can look then, in order to work out passive house and whether we've reached the passive house standard we need to think about the energy balance of a building um, so here's our building and we lose heat in um, 
various ways. We lose heat through the walls. We lose heat through the windows. We lose heat through the roof. We lose heat through the ground. Um, and also we lose heat with ventilation. So as air is coming into to the house and air is going out, we're losing some heat um, as the hot air leaves the house. Uh, we also gain energy. So there is some free energy gain. Um, part of this is the solar gain. So sunshine through our windows will bring some heat in. Um, there are also various internal gains. So some of the electrical appliances we have in the house will bring heat into the house. Uh, people, um, pets are all adding heat into the house. So there are some internal gains. There are some solar gains. Um, usually these are not enough. So you need to add some heating to your house. And these need to balance. If you're going to keep a nice, comfortable temperature, you need to have the heat coming in. The energy in must equal the energy out. So the heating, you need to adjust the heating to make sure you have the right amount. Um, in a Typically in a passive house, um, passive house has a limit for how much heating you can use. So you need to keep all of the energy out all the energy losses the uh, wall losses and the floor losses and the window losses and the ventilation losses um, must be low enough um, that your heating is below 15 kilowatt hours per square meter per year um, so as you go from a regular house um, which is probably something like this um, as you reduce the heating as you get better insulation you lose less heat as you lose less heat um, usually the solar gain doesn't change very much the internal gains don't change very much so as you reduce uh, as you get more insulation better windows you can reduce the amount of heating you need to put in um, so the question is, um, how low is low energy? Um, how much insulation do you need to call your house a low energy house? Um, you could go to zero. So you could design a house that needs no heating. Um, this is sometimes called passive solar which is heating only by solar gain. Uh, I've mentioned this before. Uh, this is an example of a house built for passive solar. So this is a house built with no heating. Um, the problem with this idea is you need a lot of windows, which is expensive. Um, on overcast, cloudy days, when it's snowing, uh, it's too cold. So you still need some heating and some extra heating or you need some kind of heat storage. Um, and when it's sunny, uh, you'll often get overheating. So it may be too hot. Uh, so you may need like a buffer zone. So between the windows and the house where you live in, you may need a space um, or you may need cooling to keep the house from overheating. So these are problems with the idea of trying to get zero heating. Um, and it turns out to be much better to just go for super insulation. So don't try to get zero heating, just try and get the heating to a very low level. Um, there was a debate between passive solar and super insulation, and basically super insulation is better. Uh, the debate finished in the 1980s, um, people are still trying to build solar, passive solar houses. Um, and another thing is that the solar gain is important and where you put windows is important. Especially when you get to a passive house level um, where the heating is a small part of your energy gains. 
the solar gains can be quite significant and can make quite a difference. So it does make a difference where you put your windows um, and thinking about solar gain. And also it's very important to think about the summer and stopping solar gain when it's hot. So you need to think about shading on top of the windows or maybe shutters so that you can shut out the heat when it's very hot. Um, this leads then, this is a comparison of um, the heat load for a house and how much it costs to make the house. Um, in fact, this is looking at both the cost of making the house and the cost of running the house. Um, because if you spend more on insulation, then you spend less on heating. Um, so the question of how to balance your cost at the beginning with your heating cost over the life of the building um, is a difficult question. And you can spend lots and lots of money and have very, very little heating, but that becomes too expensive. And you can spend very little money on insulation and a lot of money on heating. And that also becomes very expensive. Um, so there's somewhere the cheapest overall for building your house. And the idea be behind passive house is that there's a point where you don't need much heating. So you don't need to build an expensive heating system. And at that point, the price just drops for your build. And that's around 15 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. Um, so the that's the main energy use standard, the main energy use part of the passive house standard. Um, there's also an air tightness level of less than 0.6 air changes per hour. Um, this is a very high level of air tightness. And again, when you get to that level of air tightness, um, you don't have problems um, with air getting through your, in your insulation. And also, when you're airtight, um, your ventilation works better. Um, and the overall, the total energy use, including heating and water heating and everything, should be less than 120 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. Um, this is calculated by what's called PHPP software, uh, which is basically an, a big Excel file, which you put data on your house. So what, how big are the walls? Um, how big are the windows? Where are the windows? What insulation materials are you using in the walls, in the floor, in the roof? What is the U value of your windows? Um, this information needs to be added um, into the PHP software. Um, for example, that's a data being added for a wall, um, which has some plasterboard, an inner layer of insulation. The insulation has some wood, as well as structural wood, as well as the uh, insulation layer, um, and so on. So, so you calculate, and the software will work out the energy load of your house. Um, it, con it concerns and considers um, all, all the thermal gains and losses. So all of the energy that you're losing through heat and all the energy you're gaining as well. Um, it looks at all building elements. Um, it also looks for thermal bridges. So when you put the data in for a window, you don't just put the window data in. You need to put the window is being installed in the house. What is the thermal bridge? around the window installation. So all of these are calculated. And also it considers your local temperature. So um, passive house, a passive house building in Tokyo will not be the same as a passive house building in Matsumoto or a passive house building in Germany or a passive house building in Spain. Um, in each place, the climate is different. Uh, the amount of sunshine is different. The winter temperatures are different and Passive House is built to match that climate. 
Um, the inspiration for Passive House, um, uh, one part of this was a house built in Canada um, in 1977 called the, the Sas Saskatchewan Conservation House. Uh, this used two, two features of Passive House. One of them is super insulation. Another thing that they used here was heat exchange ventilation. So the first time they used, they tried to heat up the air coming in with the air going out. Um, this has become part of, um, that's the house which is uh, still there. Um, the passive house movement in Europe, the, the passive house building, the first passive house building was built in 1988. And... In, sorry, in 1991. The Passive House Standard was, was developed in 1988. This is the Passive House in Darmstadt in Germany. Um, and 1996, um, the Passive House Institute was started. And between 1998 and 2001, um, they developed um, the standard around Europe and looked at different houses uh, from Finland in the north of Europe down to Spain in the south of Europe and looked at many different places within Europe with its different climates as to what's cost effective uh, for building. Uh, as of 2010, there were 15,000 passive house buildings in Europe. Um, the first certified passive house um, in Japan was in 2011. Uh, and there are a few passive houses in Japan. Um, sometimes in Japanese this is called um, Mudambo Jutaku and the idea this is a bit confusing um, because passive houses do have some heating um, however um, in a passive house there's no need for central heating so you don't need a central heating system and um, this tends to be standard in Europe that houses in Europe are usually built with a heating with a central heating system there's a boiler and maybe each room has a radiator and heat is pumped around the house uh, when you get a passive house you no longer need to use central heating um, in Japan on the other hand most houses do not have central heating to start with um, so this is a bit of a confusing name for passive house just to explain what um, we've talked about some numbers for the standard, um, the idea um, in English, what passive house means, is that you can make the house comfortable just by heating or cooling the air coming in through the ventilation. You don't have to heat a passive house with the ventilation system but the level of heating should be low enough that it's possible to heat the house just by adding heat to the air coming into the house. Um, so let's just look at this and look at what this means in numbers. Um, the maximum temperature that you can heat air to is about 50 degrees centigrade. If the inside temperature is 30 degrees, um, if we need about 30 cubic meters of air per person per hour, and let's say we need 30 square meters of floor space per person per hour, um, and the heat capacity of air is 0.33 watt hours per cubic meter per Kelvin. Uh, so what's the maximum heating load in watts per square meter? Um, so we need to heat the air. Um, how do we heat the air? Uh, we need to use this equation. Um, that's the power, that's the amount of heat going into the air. And it's C times the volume change times the temperature difference divided by the area. Um, or 10 watts per square meter. Uh, we can just check that we've got the right units here. Uh, in this case, the area is the per floor area. 
um, these all cross out and we're left with um, watts per square meter. Um, so that comes to, if you look over the year, that will come to 15 kilowatt hours per square meter. Um, so if we want to try and do this for Matsumoto, uh, what U value do we need for Matsumoto? Um, let's look at the heating load. Uh, for passive house, the heating load is 15 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. Um, in a year, there's 80 kilokelvin hours uh, heating load in Matsumoto. Let's assume a floor area of 150 square meters for the house. Um, it's a family house. And um, let's just assume, let's just make it very simple and assume that the amount of heat that we lose through the walls is the same as the heating load. Um, now we can see the energy balance um, and we have all these things from windows, from roof, from walls, from ground and from ventilation are all the heat losses and the heat gains are solar and internal heat gains, people and fridges and computers and TVs and um, the heating. So let's let's just um, say that this, the windows bring in the same heat that they lose. So we can ignore those from both sides. And let's just say to make it an easy calculation, let's say that the heat that we lose uh, through the roof and through the ground and through the ventilation is the same as the heat we gain um, through the people and the electrical stuff and maybe the hot water that we're using in the house. Um, so we need to balance then the wall losses and the heating that we need to add. Um, the wall area, let's say it's a two-story house, 150 square meters total, that's 75 square meters on each floor. Um, and that makes the walls around 170 square meters total area. Uh, so we can work out um, we can work this all out. That's the heat loss for the year. Um, if you're doing this calculation yourself, I suggest you draw a picture uh, to check you have everything coming in and going out in the right places. Um, this comes to a heating load um, of 2,250 kilowatt hours per year. Um, the, if the heat losses are the same as the heat gains, um, then that's the heat loss. And that brings us to the wall U value of 0.165. Um, we can then look at what thickness the walls need to be and we can choose we have a range of materials here that we can build the house with probably not aluminium um, we probably want to be using xps glass wool we can we can make this with glass wool and we can work out the thickness um, how many centimeters thick does it need to be to make our walls 0.165. Um, so, so the passive house standard then is, um, here are a few features of the standard. Um, it's not changing. Uh, so the standard is 15 kilowatt hours per square meter per, per year. Um, it's been fixed since 1988. Um, it has been well researched, so many buildings have been built to this standard. We can look back and see how they were built, and we can look at how they performed after they built. They were built. Um, the problem with many standards is the standard is always changing, so we can't look back at the buildings built to the standard if the standard is new and has just changed. Um, this means with passive house because the research has been done and the calculations have been checked 
and the calculation method has been revised, this means there's a small performance gap. So when you calculate your building using the Passive House software, that's what the building will use. That's the energy the building will use. That's how much heating it will use when you move in and start to live there, which is not usually true for buildings. Usually the calculated energy use is different to what you actually use for heating. Um, and Passive House is based on two things again, then it's based on comfort and it's based on low heating energy. Um, the air temperature should always be over 20 degrees. Um, there should be no stratification. So there's no hot air on the ceiling and cold air at your ankles. Uh, there should be a small difference between your ankles and your head. Um, also radiant symmetry. So the temperature coming from different places um, should also be not so different. So you don't get like a cold wall on this side or a cold window over here. The air should not be moving um, in the winter. If, if it's drafty, if you've got moving air, um, it feels cold. Um, the relative humidity should be kept within these temperatures. Um, and this means that the room temperature doesn't feel very different. Um, also, the windows should have a surface temperature of at least 17 degrees centigrade. Um, and in the summer, the overheating, uh, it should be over 25 degrees for less than 10% of the time for passive house comfort standards within Europe. Um, so that's the comfort standard. So most of Passive House is based around making a comfortable environment within your house. Um, in doing this, you also get very low energy. Um, Passive House is not zero carbon. Um, however, if you want to make a zero carbon house, then making Passive House will help you get to zero carbon. Um, it's not a brand, it's not a company, it's not a business, it's not a style. You can build Passive House out of wood, out of concrete, out of brick, out of stone. Um, and Passive House does not decide materials. So you can use any kind of insulation you like to reach the Passive House standard. Um, it's up to you. Um, and also Passive House does not decide what heating source you can use. Uh, you can use electricity, you can use gas, you can use wood, you can use oil. Um, the only thing it decides is that the heating load is very low. So because the heating load is quite low, it doesn't really matter what heating source you use. Um, Passive House, the standard itself has not changed. Um, what has changed is the modelling has got better. Um, so the calculations of how you reach the standard um, have changed a little bit. Um, Passive House is looking around the world at different climates. Uh, Europe, of course, has a range of climates. Um, but there are some climates that Europe does not have, which Passive House is looking at. Uh, another area that Passive House is improving and looking at now is renewable energy. So how do you calculate, if you do have solar panels on your roof, uh, what difference does that make um, to your building? Um, so... Uh, just a quick look at economics. Um, so you, if you start with um, uh, maybe a, I'm calling it a normal house, but a house with not very much insulation, then what tends to happen in the winter is it gets cold and you need to put in lots of heating, which means the running costs are very expensive. Now, what you could do is put in more heating, um, then the house will not be cold. Um, it'll be hot and it will be very expensive. It probably still won't be very comfortable. You could add some insulation to your house. Um, this will make it warm. 
probably it will still be expensive to heat. You'll keep using the same heating that you used before. It'll just be warm for longer. Um, if you then use super insulation, the building will be warm and your heating cost starts to go down. Um, so that's that's the idea behind super insulation and super insulation is behind passive house. Um, and that's all about passive house. Uh, here are some references. And um, that's all.